All right, everybody, this is Jeff with Living in Arizona. And since it is in the middle of summer, basically, you know, here it is, J July 5th. I just had a July party here, or a 4th of July party, 3rd of July party at my house. And we were dealing with the extreme heat outside and people not really wanting to go outside at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So what to do uh, before, you know, 6 o'clock at sunset when it finally starts to cool down and become tolerable. And that's what this video is going to be talking about, sharing some of my discoveries of things that I had to apply to making a July 4th party in Phoenix tolerable for guests. And we're also going to talk about some other things related to that. Now, before we do, if you're new to this channel, Living in Arizona, you can subscribe to this channel. I also wanted to say I am going to be doing some traveling. Uh, this channel will still be active, of course, but I'll be doing some traveling around the world. If you guys like content like that, you can subscribe to my other channel here, which is on featured channels, Island Hopper TV. That's my channel where I go all around the world. I've been, you'll see when you go there, all these videos from all over Santorini, uh, France, um, Asia and whatnot. All right, let's go ahead and dial this in here and talk about this subject. Now on our group in living in Arizona, I did make a comment about uh, no politics in the group. Uh, this is a resource for all people who are considering a move to Arizona. So I also wanted to say that. So you can catch up with us in our group living in Arizona, but just we're going to try to keep the politics to a limit, a minimum. I know politics come up, it's all around us, every news station. So we try to keep politics out of this, but uh, it comes up every once in a while and rears its ugly head. I even talk politics, but not here. This channel is not for politics. And I got to do a better job probably too. No more picking on California, guys. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the weather. So you can see here, it's Friday, 105. It was 106 on 3rd of July, but you know we got the heat coming in. It's 110, 112, and 114 by the end of this next week so this time next week we'll be in the teens for 100 teens right as high as 114 that's hot 114 is really hot what to do in those kind of situations well uh one of the things that i personally did just to cool down my environment so this is the way i look at it shade in my opinion takes about 10 degrees off the weather so anytime you can get any sort of shade you're going to be cooling it down by 10 to 15 degrees depending on how hot it is and then when what you can do to cool it down another 10 to 15 degrees even beyond that is bring in mister systems so if you're looking for misters uh they really do work and that's not a joke i mean you got to have something to hold them on whether it be an umbrella or a pergola or a rooftop something or just a line it doesn't matter you can get them on amazon for 20 bucks or you can have the professionals do them correctly but lots of companies here that you can go to misters right here senior mist um you know You'll see these commonly used in cafes. They do work. Here's some examples of shade. All right, so that's something that you can do to instantly, you know, create a cooler environment outdoors. It's misters. Now, I will say this. Pools are important in Arizona. You will not realize that you need a pool until it becomes over 100 degrees and you want to use your outdoor area. Your outdoor area in the summertime without a pool is basically not very fun. Well, you got to have a lot of shade if you don't have a pool. So pools are very important. I personally recommend a pool and a tub, uh, a spa next to each other. That's what I recommend. Obviously, not everyone's going to be able to afford that, but you can see. Now, how much does it cost to build a pool? It's anywhere between nine to $32,000 for an in-ground pool. The lowest is... 200 and the highest is around 80,000. One of my neighbors is building an $80,000 pool. I've seen someone build their pool for $35,000 and included this travertine deck. So that's a pretty good deal. I personally really recommend the travertine. I like travertine because the rock doesn't get as hot and also it's a really nice aesthetic. It's just travertine has been my favorite. I've seen pavers, I've seen uh, concrete or like a like a stamp con concrete and I've seen just acrylics but uh, acrylics get really hot, flagstone chips, travertine is just the best that I've seen yet. This is, this is what I recommend. Okay, and then so what other types of pools? If you can't afford the big pool, what can you do? Well, you could consider a cocktail pool, a smaller pool. They also have a spool, S-P-O-O-L. Write those down if you're looking to save money and build a pool. Now, the best way to probably do it is buy a house that already has a pool built in. That way, when you're moving in, it's already built into the price of the home and in the mortgage you don't have to pay the extra fifty thousand dollars so 
Finding a home that's already got a pool, that's a great idea. A pool or a spa, some sort of body of water to get in to cool it off. Thankfully, I have a spa in my backyard. It's just a little small, considering if I want to have a lot of guests or kids in particular who like to pee in pools. I don't know if kids pee in pools. Uh, all of them do, but I always have to tell the kids, don't pee in the pool. Don't pee in the spa because it's a small body of water and you know you don't want that. But larger pools, I guess, if they're going to pee in the water, I guess they're going to do it. You know, it's, I was just even looking it up online. The reason that people get the red eyes is not because of too much chlorine. It's the reaction between the urine and the uh, chlorine that causes kids to get red eyes. So I try to tell kids, don't pee in pools, period. And if you're an adult who pees in pools, you should stop. <laughs> do what you want. But if you're coming over to my house, getting in my water, don't be peeing in my pool. Uh, anyway, but the spa that I have, I, got, I like the option to have it heated because I don't really like too cold of water. So I, I use the uh, heater. I can make it 80 degrees. I can make it 94 degrees. I can make it 100 degrees, you know, depending on the weather. Or I could just leave it at regular temperature, which is, who knows, maybe 75 or 80 degrees. So I do recommend pools. Like I said, they range between 5,500 and 32,000 or up to as high as 50,000 and even higher beyond that, just depending on who you're going to go with. Sunkiss pools, presidential pools, California pools, all ideas for pools, but I do recommend pools. And that's not a joke. Here in Phoenix, in the summertime, for about three to four months, your yard is going to be virtually uninhabitable without a pool. Okay, so some other summer weather tips that they're recommending, how to make this place tolerable during the summer. Definitely uh, consider sunscreen or a lotion to put on to do that. Uh, rest frequently in shady areas. Um, the, the heat is not terrible. It's just hot. So you'll be, I haven't found it to be too, too bad. I mean, I would say it's definitely hot. You do notice it, but I wouldn't sit here and say, oh my gosh, it's intolerable. It's terrible. I feel like it's the hottest place on earth because it's not. Dubai is hotter. Singapore with the muggy and the heat, it's hotter. I mean, I've been to Shenzhen when it was very unbearably hot. Phoenix having that dry sauna heat is not unbearable. It's just hot. What I mean by that is going out in your backyard, sitting under something without shade or sitting under something with limited shade is a bit uh, uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. So I even wear light, uh, loose fitting, lightweight, long sleeve shirts just to protect against the sun for the, some of those of you who are concerned about driving and having your arm in the sun while you're driving. You were asking about that. Uh, be careful definitely with kids, animals and whatnot. So if you have infants, don't leave them in the car, obviously for any period longer than like five seconds. I mean. The only time, it's seriously, don't take your eyes off your kids in the car, especially in Arizona. It's hot. Um, animals too. If you're going to leave your animals outside, they need to have shade and they should be coming in and out of the house throughout the day. There shouldn't be outdoors for extended long periods of time, especially without water. And if the water is out there, it should be in the shade too. So it's not like they're drinking hot water. Um, you can see there's other things that they want to, they want to tell you guys. You can come on here to Arizona. Uh, visit Arizona.com for this weather tips. There's also some other information on here. Um, what? They got cookies. Visit Arizona. And they decided not to... Oh, they put things to do out here, I guess, if you're looking for that. But um, climate in Phoenix, the hottest month in Phoenix on record typically is this month of July. And we're supposed to get a little bit of a cool down when the precipitation comes in from the monsoon, but it hasn't arrived yet. Now, inside your house, some of the things that you can definitely do are put sunshades on your windows. These black sunscreens, they're, you, can see through, you can see through it looking out, but looking in, it's blacked out. But that sunshade is going to block out, some, is going to provide your house with UV protection. Now, they are expensive. They are about, uh, I want to say, anywhere between $100 to $300 per window. And if you have a bunch of windows, it's going to be expensive. But long term, it's going to be like installing solar panels. you got to pay a lot up front, but long term, it pays off, pays for itself, right? So with solar, solar screens or black shades, I recommend those. You can get them in other colors, I think, but you have to ask the HOA for approval. So that's something to consider. And as far as air conditioning units, I definitely recommend central cooling above all other cooling that I've seen or smelt because some air conditioners have like this weird smell to it. You know, those wall units, stuff like that. Um, one of the things that I've also thought about doing is making my 
garage more habitable. So sealing up some of the, the areas where the ventilation can get out and the air can get out. And then, you know, that in includes uh, putting caulking around the garage so there's no way for hot air to come in or even cold air to come in. Because in the winter when I had a party, it was too cold to be outside. So you do have that paradigm of too cold and too hot in different uh, seasons, pol the, the polarity of different seasons. So having a habitable garage, you know, I put down that epoxy in my garage. That seems to be uh, pretty good. And then I just make it, you know, comfortable in there. But having a fan and then, you know, putting the epoxy uh, is good. And then if it's assuming that the air can't get out, you can you can open up the garage and let the air con the central cooling from inside your house help cool it. So that's that's one thing that I would recommend also considering. So uh, if if you're dealing with your car, make sure you get a car with AC seriously, or at least it has the windows that can go down. I mean, AC is optimal. Uh, it, it shouldn't even be optional. It's optimal. It's primal. It's necessary. Uh, if you don't have AC though, like I said, uh, make sure the windows at least roll down. And if you don't have AC also, and you know, whatever your situation is, definitely getting one of those sunscreens for the windshield. And tinted windows. Tinted windows are a big thing out here. So, uh, some people like to do their windshield, but that's illegal. And limo tint, I believe in the front is illegal, so you can only do a certain percentage in the front. But window tint should help cool your car down, and then you just put the, the sunshade over there, and you should have a cooler car when you get in. And not necessarily like a hot box, you know, where, where the steering wheel is so hot. Or you're just in there and you're like, whoa, whoa, this is too hot. You're literally like, whoa, that's getting in your car on a 114 degree day after parking at Walmart for two hours can be pretty, pretty brutal, especially if you don't have AC. So keep that in mind. Anyways, guys, if you're new to this channel, do subscribe to Living in Arizona. Check us out on Facebook. The link is below. And you can also subscribe to Island Hopper TV my travel channel for when I do start traveling. So we will see you guys next time.